Welcome to another episode of Thoughts to Chew On, the show where the chopping block gets fleshed out. Resident Evil fans, rejoice! The original Resident Evil trilogy is now available on PC, all because of the amazing people at GOG. Currently, the original Resident Evil is the only playable game which you can get separately for $9.99, but Resident Evil 2 and 3 are going to become playable sometime this year. If you want to buy all three games, with one being available to play now and the others acting as a pre-order, you can pay $24.99 for the bundle. I'm going to link this in the description below because Capcom has been so stingy with re-releasing the original games, so if people buy this now, this will show Capcom that people want the ability to play the original games and not just the remakes. I understand that some people cannot play on PC or feel annoyed at the prospect of downloading another game loader, but GOG happened to get the green light from Capcom, so please, please support this release if you can. The last time we got a port of Resident Evil, let alone the trilogy, was with the PlayStation 3 and technically the PS Vita. I'm not counting the PS5 version because it's only if you pay out the ass for Sony's bullshit PS Plus Premium or whatever it's called. The version they gave was the greatest hits version of the director's cut, which had horrible music. I'm not shitting on the GH director's cut, I grew up with that version and it holds a special place in my heart. But for the love of God, if you're going to hold Resident Evil hostage behind a paywall, at least give us a different version or the ability to switch between the versions. What we got via the GOG port is the PC version of Resident Evil, which is a version not a lot of people play. I believe people use that version for the HD mods, but if you're a non-PC gamer or haven't had the opportunity to dabble in the amazing world of Resident Evil mods, this version is available. I remember watching YouTube videos about the Windows version from Lotus Prince and Avalanche Reviews, but the play for myself is a different experience in of itself. For starters, this version has a longer opening cinematic that's in full color. Instead of the implied gore in the PlayStation opening cinematic, you get to see the Cerberuses that kill Joseph and get to see their faces get blown off. It's corny, sure, I was eating up the really cool practical effects and the saturated colors that made Wesker's blonde hair look like the top of Bart Simpson's hair. We also get to see Chris Redfield smoke a cigarette during the cast rollout, which was censored in the PlayStation release. I know there's a Sega Saturn and DS version of the original Resident Evil, but I'm basing the differences off the PlayStation version because that's the one I grew up with. I played up to the Yawn boss battle and I was in absolute awe the entire time. The models are much cleaner than the PlayStation counterpart and it's like seeing them for the first time all over again. Everything is much cleaner and visually stunning, though there are times when the added clarity ruins the illusion of certain scenes. An example of this is the infamous Jill Sanger scene. Barry and Jill's models are so bright and clear that they clash with the pre-rendered backgrounds and have a new glow to them. It doesn't ruin the cutscene or create performance issues, it's just a matter of seeing these things. Tired of those pesky loading screens? You can skip them. I believe that was a thing in the original PC version and it was in the DS version, but it makes you fight through the game. Honestly, the game itself feels faster and smoother. I usually glide through the game because I played it more times than I can remember, but here I feel like I'm flying through the area at max speed. And the fact that you can skip the loading screens adds to that. While the game runs fast, there are frame rate issues with the cutscenes that I've never experienced in the PlayStation version, let alone any version. The game itself runs well in my experience, but there are some hiccups here and there that I hope get patched out. The way you save is also different. There are still typewriters and designated save areas, but you don't require increments to save. Most would see this as making the game easier, but I disagree. Veteran fans will know this game like the back of their hand, and often it's a game to see how little we can save. So I doubt anyone would notice a difference in that regard. For new fans, the challenge of the base game still exists. Just because you have an option for unlimited saves does not negate the fact that it's in a designated area, the enemies can still rock your shit, and it's a game based on trial and error. That confidence can lead to you getting slapped around or making careless mistakes. You still have to resource manage and overall survive. So its impact on your overall experience, it's rather minuscule in the grand scheme of things. The controls are exactly the same as it was, which is fine to me. This is mainly a straight up port job with some differences, but the people at GOG have controller support for multiple controller types, so there's no need to mess with the settings. Once you get the game, you can just pick up and play. I played Resident Evil 3 on a Dreamcast emulator and playing with a keyboard is not really optimal, but it was an interesting experience. I would recommend connecting a controller though. The music is not the director's cut's music. I love the GH director's cut soundtrack, basement theme and all, 
but it's so great to hear the original songs. Though at times, the music transitions don't work, so there's a hard cut between tracks. It's not horribly distracting, but as someone who's played the game a million times, it's something I noticed. But I genuinely have a hard time finding any complaints from what I've played so far. The original Resident Evil is my favorite game of all time, and my favorite Resident Evil game of all time. So having the ability to play conveniently genuinely makes me happy, and if I wasn't so happy and giddy, I'd be crying, honestly. I don't mind digging into my closet for my DS or PSP, or even setting up the PlayStation, but to finally play one of my favorite games in the best way possible, and the most convenient way possible, on top of being an official release, is a euphoric experience. This makes me excited to play Resident Evil 2 and 3 when they eventually come out, and it makes me hope that Capcom gets their head out of their ass and make proper remasters. I really would love to play these games with trophy support, but as of right now, I'm really happy with what we got and I hope people support their ports. I'm only missing the arranged mode from the GH Threaders cut and the ability to use a cheat code to double the ammo, but for $9.99 for just Resident Evil and $24.99 for all three games, you're getting a bang for your buck. I'm genuinely shocked that we got these ports in the first place. Most fans at this point have either had their console of choice to play the game or have used the amazing mods on their emulated copies. There are HD mods, mods that incorporate the DS version's campaign, costumes, etc. It was last week when Gamatsu reported that the PC version of Resident Evil was given a new rating, which led Resident Evil fans and content creators to speculate if we're finally getting the collection we've all wanted. I was hopeful, but at the same time, I was ready to just write it off as a coincidence. Boy, was I wrong, huh? It's so crazy that it came from GOG.com of all places because most people, including myself, would have expected a console slash Steam release with an extravagant physical edition. It's not to say that GOG.com is a bad place to drop it, but it's an entirely new launcher, and to expect people to flock over there is brave, I guess. But GOG stepped up to the plate, showed Capcom that they can cook, and they were given the keys. So I'm genuinely appreciative of the work they did to get these games officially preserved. Could it have been better? Absolutely. For years, there have been mods and fan projects that have made the original Resident Evil a crazily optimized game. Hell, there are even ports that have added great quality of life improvements such as a quick turn and tactical reloading. As I'm writing this video, fans have been testing mods on this version of the game and even creating their own patches to fix the issues present in this port. But at the end of the day, I see this as the first step in Capcom showing love to these classic games and that we someday get another remastered collection from Capcom that pulls out all the stops. The Resident Evil fanbase, especially the money scene, is fantastic, and has shown that at times, fans will go a step beyond the companies that own the IP themselves. But I would recommend grabbing this official port of the game to not only show Capcom that we care, but that this is still a fantastic game that should be cherished and preserved 29 years later. What? What is this? What is it? Blood. Jill, see if you can find any other clues. I'll be examining this. Hope this is not Chris's blood. Thanks for watching. If there are any topics you want me to cover in the next thoughts that you want, let me know in the comments section below. And if you liked the video and want to see more, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. I love my patrons, Leo Crit. Retroroy, Hack13, Neosai, Burbsai, the channel with the freakishly long name, and Hachi for supporting the channel. And for $1 a month, your name will show up right here on top of early access to new videos. Love you guys and Shalomumu.